Hi, my name is Kristen, and this is Kristen Cray's Books. So I haven't done a book haul in a while, because I haven't been buying that many books. I don't think I've posted one since the beginning of the year, when I was talking about the books that I received for Christmas. So I have about 16 to 20 books here. I think it's around 16. But I just want to share them with you. I have some really exciting books on here. Some that I've already read, I'm not going to haul because I've talked to you about them already, but there are two that I have read, but I read them before that I own them. And I just want you to know that I love these books so much that I had to have them on my shelf. So I want to take a second to highlight them. And the first one is Briny and Roses by T. King Fisher. For somebody who talks about T. King Fisher in every single video, I do not actually own a lot of her books, so I am slowly collecting them. This is the only Beauty and the Beast retelling that I've ever truly loved. It is on the shorter side. I actually think this is a good place to start with T. King Fisher. Maybe not the best, but still enjoyable. And if you're already familiar with Beauty and the Beast, if you already like retellings, you're going to love this. And it's got T. King Fisher's quirky writing. I didn't initially love these covers of her indie releases, but they're kind of growing on me. They're super shiny, so hard to film with. But I just love her so much. So you know I had to get this, and I just think that this is a great book. Then the next one that I've already read was the best book that I read in March. I listened to an audiobook from Libro Femme, and I knew I needed this cover on my shelves, and then I loved the book, so of course I had to have it. And this is Wayward by Amelia Hart. Look at this cover. This cover is just stunning, and it's everything I love in historical fantasy. There are witches, it's multi-generational, it really gets into the connection between all these women and how they have been affected by men and how they are resilient. It's very empowering, but sad and just fantastic. Lives up to the gorgeous co cover. So happy to have it on my shelves because I have a feeling I will be referencing this book quite a bit. Moving on to books I haven't read yet, and the first one I've talked about quite a few times because it was our March pick for the Book Checkout Book Club. The live show I can officially announce is happening April 23rd at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Kate's channel, so I will leave a link to Kate's channel down below and the Discord. You have plenty of time to read this because I haven't even read it yet. I think only one of the co-hosts re has read it so far. So that is A Song of Blood and Stone by Elle Penelope. This is the first book in an epic fantasy series. I've said this many times, I just have to keep saying it. There's so many editions of this first book. The audiobook's different than the hardcover. This paperback, she's added tons more words, new characters and everything. So we're all gonna have different editions. It's gonna lead to an interesting discussion. So if you wanna join us, you still have plenty of time to check that one out. I have one book from the publisher and this is an exciting one. It's Venus Underground by Jeff Vandermeer. I'm hoping to get to this in April because of Ramathon, this is sci-fi, and a lot of the sci-fi that I'm reading this month is more space stuff and not set on Earth, so I think that this could be interesting for something different. This is actually Jeff Vandermeer's debut book that they've just redone, and they re-released the audiobook as well, and actually, if you're part of the Libro Femme Influencer Program, one of the audiobooks that we got this month was this one, so that's perfect. I will immerse and read this and let you know what I think. I never know what to expect from Jeff Vandermeer. His books are so weird and you just have to go along for the ride, but this cover definitely has me intrigued. It'll be interesting to read his debut, so we will see. I then have a couple of romances. The first one is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Paulston. Everybody has loved this. Even people who are skeptical about the premise like I was have loved this, so I have high hopes for it. And then somebody said that it's like, just like Heaven the movie with Reese Witherspoon and Mark Ruffalo, which is like one of my guilty pleasure movies. I just love that movie, even though the whole setup is kind of silly and ridiculous. That's what I expect from this. Apparently it's actually really well written and people swoon over it. And I just like that it's got that ghostly element. So I am curious to see what I think. And I just love this cover as well. So happy to own this one. The next romance is from one of my favorite romance authors I read. Love and Other Disasters, when it came out last year, fell in love with it, knew I'd read anything that Anita Kelly writes, and this is their 2023 release, and it's been getting even better reviews than Love and Other Disasters, because I know that one gets mixed opinions, but everybody seems to love this. This is something wild and wonderful, and this is a romance that takes place on like a hiking trail, and I think it's Grumpy Sunshine. One of them is more of an experienced hiker than the other, so I think there could be some fun antics in here, and I've just been hearing incredible things. And Anita Kelly has become an autobi author for me, so obviously I needed this one. 
And I say this in every video, but the last thing I need to do is start more series, but of course I have two first books in new fantasy series, so, well they're old fantasy series, but new to me, and I couldn't resist because they've been getting a lot of love, and the first one is The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. Now if you watch my wrap up, you know that I soft DNF S.A. Chakraborty's newest release, um, The Adventures of Amina Al Sarafi, but everybody assured me that this one I will like and that the tone is different and people who also didn't seem to love this one are obsessed with this series. It, the David Bad trilogy has been on my TBR for years. I just never got my hands on a copy so I went for it. I'm really really excited about it. I love historical fantasy so I have high hopes for this one. I just think that this is going to work for me. I can't remember what month it was but one of the fairy loot boxes we got in the past couple months had this art print and normally I don't like art prints as an item but this is for Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber and honestly I never really paid much attention to that series but I saw this art print and I was like okay I need to read the book that corresponds with this print so of course I grabbed it. Stephanie Garber has never really been an author I paid much attention to because Caraval, her popular series, is often compared to The Night Circus and I just really didn't like The Night Circus. So I've just never really paid too much attention to her books, but people are loving this. Even people who have said they've moved away from YA, YA fantasy in particular, have been obsessed with this, have fallen in love with this series. I know that the second book just came out, so I had to give it a try. I only have a couple hardcovers here, so let's talk about those. I read Clytemnestra by Costanza Cassati a couple months ago and I really really love that and it just reminded me how much I do like Greek myth retellings so when I saw Ithaca by Claire North I had to grab it I know nothing about Ithaca as a character which is exciting because I went to Clytemnestra knowing her story already so knowing nothing about um, a character in a Greek myth retelling really appeals to me I haven't heard much about this one yet but it's blurred by Jennifer Saint who I adore so I'm really excited about this and this cover is stunning Miriam Taves, who wrote Women Talking, which was just adapted into a movie, I think it won an Oscar. I love Miriam Taves. She's a Canadian author. I also read All My Puny Sorrows by her, and Amazon was having a sale. I think this book was $5, so I had to grab it. This is actually her newest release. I think it came out last year, and this is Fight Night. And I think this is just a simple story about the relationship between a mother or a grandmother and a granddaughter. And uh, the granddaughter is suspended from school, so the grandmother's taking care of her and has her write letters to her father, I believe. And I just, Miriam Taves has this way of writing really simple stories, but are really moving. It's all about the characters and the conversations that they have. So that's what I expect from this. It was a good deal. It's on the shorter side. I haven't read a Miriam Taves in a minute, so I'm happy to own this. This is one I've had my eye on since it came out. I don't know, just something about it appeals to me. And this is The Bandit Queens by Perini Shroff. And this is about a woman whose abusive husband dies or disappears and everyone suspects that she has killed him but even though she hasn't. And they tend to respect her more and they're a little scared of her. But then women within this community start coming to her and asking her to kill their husbands. And she does that, maybe, I'm not sure, but I think that's where this story is going. And this is a 2023 release and it's been getting some good reviews and that just sounds like an interesting premise to me. And I want to mention that I am going to talk about the Fairy Loot editions that I've received over the past few months. And if you haven't received your March ones yet, because I'm not sure that everybody has, I'm going to leave those to the end so you can skip that part. But first I have all of the indie slash self-published books that I bought recently. I've really been on like an indie self-published kick and I like to get the uh, physical copies for those when I can. So I have a little bit of a stack here to show you. Starting with Manner of Life and Death by Kim M. Watt. I've talked about this series before. The first book in this series is called Baking Bad. This is a cozy mystery series with dragons. So if you're looking to get into cozy mysteries but you are a fantasy lover, Highly, highly recommend these. They have the greatest names. This is the Beauford Scales Mystery Series, and I think there's eight or more books out now. It's an ongoing series, so I just think it's really, really a good time, and I don't think you have to know anything more than it's Cozy Mysteries with Dragons, and if that appeals to you, you're going to love it. And the next one is obviously T. King Fisher. This is one of her indie published books that somehow flew under the radar. It came out in November of last year. I heard nothing about it. Didn't even realize it was out until Sarah from Brighton Bookish mentioned it. And of course I had to buy it. Know nothing about it as usual with T. King Fisher. I just trust her. So I'm excited about this one and to tell you what I think is one of my five star predictions. I know that it involves art in some way. As you can see, this bird has 
a paintbrush in his mouth and I love books about art. I love taking Fisher so I think I'm pretty confident in my five star prediction for this one. Something about the cover and just the premise of this one really caught my eye and this is Tears in the Water by Margarita Skilla and this is set in a fictional city in the Mediterranean at a fictional college that really focuses on sports and athletics and we follow different characters on different teams in this college at this college and their connections their relationships both platonic and romantic and I just think it's going to be really sweet and I just love the whole idea of this I think that this is going to be a perfect book to read on the beach this summer and I can't wait to get to it and then of course I have another cozy mystery I get recommended these on Goodreads all the time for some reason I always add them to my want to read shelf and then when I'm in the mood need some joy I buy one so that's what this is about this is a coup de tea by Casey Blair. This is the first book in the Tea Princess Chronicles and this is again like a cozy fantasy and with like a mystery twist I believe and it follows a princess who's supposed to get married and to serve the crown and she decides that she's going to run away instead and she ends up in a community outside in this like dangerous area where there's magic and she runs a tea shop. So I just think this is going to be really sweet and there's going to be some higher stakes than you might expect and I hope I love this and can continue on with the series because this just really calls to me. So as you may know, I've been reading a lot of the Spiffbo books for a project with Cassidy from Covers with Cassidy and the books that have appealed to me the most in that project are the lighter fantasy, the cozy fantasy. A lot of them are, have dragons and that is just what I like now. I like like Regency romance with dragons, like scales and sensibility. That is just something I'm looking for and after that this was recommended to me on Goodreads and of course I was instantly intrigued. This is Pemberley, Mr. Darcy's Dragon. This is the first book in the Jane Austen Dragon books by Maria Grace. You know how much I love Pride and Prejudice. One of my most viewed videos, or maybe my most viewed video on this channel, is showing you my Pride and Prejudice collection. It's my favorite movie, the 2005 edition. I just love the whole story. The idea of Mr. Darcy having a dragon appeals to me, and I think in this one, it's a world where only certain people are aware that dragons exist and can interact with them or even see them. And Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth are two of those people. And Mr. Darcy has an egg that is stolen. It ends up in Hertfordshire where obviously Elizabeth lives and he meets her and discovers that she has like a really deep connection with dragons to a level that nobody else does. And they work together to find this, this egg. And obviously they don't get along at first. She thinks he's arrogant. So you know the whole story of Mr. Darcy and there's so many books in the series so I hope that I love this because it's exactly what I'm craving these days. And then speaking of Spiffbo, I actually bought the sequel to one of those books and that book was Mrs. Percy's Pocket Guide to the, Fair and Ke the Care and Feeding of British Dragons. Yes, by Quenby Olsen and that book has not been creating the greatest reviews within the people doing this project. But I loved it. It's for a very specific audience and I say that audience is me. If you read the first chapter and you don't get along with the writing, I don't think it's worth continuing on. It's a very slice of life. Nothing happens. Loved every second of it. So I had to get the sequel. This is Miss Percy's Travel Guide to Welsh Moors and Frail Dragons. And the first book was a very, very slow burn romance. So I'm hoping we get more of that connection in here. We learn more about dragons. It's really just following a woman who is living a simple life. She is helping to raise her sister's children and she ends up in the possession of this dragon egg. She doesn't want it but she's forced to take care of it. The dragon hatches. It's so sweet. She's trying to protect it and there's somebody that's after the dragon egg. She has a bit of a romance brewing and she learns a lot about herself but she doesn't completely change and I liked that about her. So the way it's set up at the end you know where this is going to go and what this story is going to focus on. So I'm just so happy to own this. Hopefully I can get to it soon. Okay, so we're going to move on to the Fairy Loot editions. So if you are missing some boxes from the last couple of months, skip this part. If you're just curious to see what they look like, stick around. And I'm not sure the order that these come in, came in. I always get confused, but I'm pretty sure that this one here was the January book. Yes, I think it was. This is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshani Tchotchke and if you've been around you know I read this and that I was deeply disappointed in it. It's my least favorite book that I've read this year so far but we won't get too much into that. I just want to show you how stunning this is. So here's the cover. These sprayed edges, super cool and creepy. And then this is under the dust jacket. Gorgeous. And... I love the um, stained glass look of the end pages here, but yeah, I just didn't like this. I thought I can get behind 
a book that is no plot just vibes but this just didn't work I felt like it was just hiding behind the writing and yeah just wasn't for me but some people have loved this so if this is something you want to try I don't want to discourage you from giving it a try and there's no denying that this edition is stunning and then I have one of their YA books this is Spice Road by Maya Abraham and this is one of the most beautiful books that I own I am in love with these edges if it'll focus on those for you look how gorgeous those are so stunning and then let's see here how gorgeous this is under the dust jacket I love it and there's actually let me see I never do this but I do like the alternate design underneath but I still think this is prettier but I do think that's cute that they included that as well and even the back of this is beautiful like as a book this is stunning I hope I love this end pages gorgeous as always but those edges are top tier Every, everybody points them out when I have them on my shelves because they just stand out from the rest and then sadly another book that was disappointing to me I softy enough this one I just think it was a mood thing it was not what I was expecting at the time I will try again but this is the adventures of Amina Al Sharafi by Shannon Chakraborty gorgeous look at this look what they've done this is an alternate cover it's not the same as the traditional UK cover these edges with the ship in it look gorgeous so creative obsessed even the spine on this one I love and then under the dust jacket stunning these edges these end papers gorgeous this one with the cat it's probably my favorite end page ever look at the cat love it so like I want to love this because this physical book is one of the most beautiful things I've ever read and people are really loving this so I think if I go into it knowing what to expect now trying it again I will enjoy the experience more then we have a YA City of Nightmares by Rebecca Schaefer and I don't know if I love the color changes on this one as much I mean I love pink obviously I'm in pink in lots of videos but I did like the green of the original cover but the more I look at it in camera the more that I like it and the sprayed edges are pretty cool there that's a pterodactyl there and there's a pterodactyl on the cover so I'm very intrigued by that aspect of the story look at this and you'd have to feel the texture of this and then you got the pterodactyl on the back so like this alone makes me so intrigued about the story I don't think I realized that there were dinosaurs in this at all so I'm intrigued by that and then there we go stunning and actually I think I left a bookmark in here so I didn't realize so that is cool and yeah I just love the feel of this and the whole style of this one two more and I know these are the March ones so the adult one was Foxglove King by Hannah Witten everybody has been loving this which is so exciting I wasn't sure what to expect but it's getting rave reviews and I love the changes they made I love the purple that they added to the text here and how it looks in person it actually looks like it's glowing up the page it is so pretty in person and again I don't think the spine or the edges translate as well on camera as they do in person they are beautiful and then under to the dust jacket look how gorgeous that is stunning and just I find that the end pages are quite dark on this one but I think that probably matches the tone I really want to get to this one sooner rather than later because it is getting rave reviews and then finally the YA book for March is Seven Faceless Saints by MK Lobb this was one of my most anticipated books of the year I'm so intrigued by the premise of this one but look at the size of this book it is so much smaller I want to show you in comparison to the Fox Glove King I was shocked by the size of this book I don't want to ruin that cover I was shocked by the size of this book but it's stunning look at this the amount of detail they are able to get on these edges now is incredible look at that and I kind of like the size of this in comparison to the others I don't know I think it's kind of fun and pages here I want to get to that one as well that is one of my most anticipated books of the year I don't know I haven't really read reviews yet so if you have read this let me know what your thoughts are about it and if you've read any of the books that I shared today I would love to hear your thoughts I'm excited about all of them I hope to get to all of them really soon I am bad about buying books and then reading other things so that needs to change because these are all the books I've hauled since January and I read two of them and the only two that I've read are ones that I bought after I read I think I have like a couple like the golden spoon I'm not showing you and a couple other ones but not that many so yes give me your thoughts on all these motivate me to pick them up which one sounds most interesting to you I would love to know that as well thanks for your support I'll talk to you again soon bye for now